Yo yo, what's up everyone? I know it's been a while since my last video. No, I'm not dead. So, there's a lot of videos that I've been meaning to make, but all of them I kind of felt like weren't needed. But this is a highly requested video, which is how do I patch programs, or how do I patch C programs, how do I pl apply patches to suckless utilities, that sort of thing. So in this video, we're going to start from scratch. And uh, in fact, this video, I know you can't tell because I, it's uploaded, but I'm actually going to do this live. So I'm, I'm going to go from downloading source to downloading a patch and then applying that patch. Um, so here we go. Uh, we are going to firstly go to the Suckless website and we're going to get a copy of T menu. So within the tools, D menu, here we go. So we're going to go into the temp directory here and we're going to git clone D menu. Hmm. I think I know what's up. So yeah, what happened there looks like that the suckless website didn't renew their SSL certificate anyways that's not a big deal anyway so we got the source and I should say that so and then we're gonna CD into the source but I should say that um, I am going to apply a patch that I've applied in the past before and that is the center patch. So I know I told one of my subscribers that I no longer use the center patch because there's a certain script that doesn't work well anymore with the center patch. So really quick to do, I have this script called to do. Uh, this is some testing. Anyways, we're gonna delete this. So basically the way this to do list works is we're gonna put item one, item two, item three. Oops. So basically, this is saving to a hidden file in my home directory, but that's not important. Basically, I just keep adding items in this line, item four. And basically, when I select, let's say, item three, it deletes it from the list. So it's pretty simple. Anyways. As I'm going to show you, after I apply the center patch to D, D, to D menu, it's not going to work so well. Anyways, moving along. So I have the D menu source here. And to build it, I'm going to run make. And I should say, when I say build, I really mean compile. But anyways, so I have just compiled D menu. And as you can see, there's a bunch of new files here that weren't here before, including a bunch of .o files, which if you didn't know, are binary files. And there's a new one called dmenu. So that's the, that's the important script. There's also dmenu run, which uses dmenu to bring up the programs like this. Anyways, to install dmenu, this new dmenu configuration, you run sudo make install. So as you can see, the colors are all different, but fundamentally it's the same. And you can apply some options, as you can read here in the D menu manual. That's not important for now, but moving along, I want to get the center patch like I was talking about. Like I said before, I no longer use the center patch because it makes that to-do script run weird and I am going to show you how it runs weird okay so we are going to click here and save this so we're gonna I am going to make a directory called patches and this is just habit I like to make a separate directory called patches where I put all my patches 
so that it's separate from the actual source. Anyways, we are going to move the patch file or the diff file and we're going to put it into patches. Okay, so we so we go into patches. Here we go. And we are going to view this file. So let's take a look. In fact, actually what I'm going to do is get out and then go D menu. Okay, here we go. So this is the diff file. So basically in the diff file anything that has a plus we're going to add and anything that has a minus we are going to take out. In the first first things first, we're going to look at exactly what file we're going to edit. So here we can see that we are going to be changing the dmenu.c file. So without further ado, let's edit that file. So let's go. So we're I don't know if it was clear, but I was in the dmenu directory before. So it should be here, dmenu.c. Okay, here we go. And the first place we want to go to, as I'm pointing to with my cursor, is line 88. So let's go to line 88. So I go in Vim, I go 88GG. Oh, and by the way, in Vim, to toggle between these two windows, I press Control W, Control W. So I go to line 88, and it gives me some context, in fact, about where I'm supposed to be. So it looks like right before I'm supposed to make this, this addition, it's going to be a break and then the end of a function, it looks like. So anyways, we're going to grab this, yank it, and then put it right here, like it says. And we're going to get rid of these. And I should mention here that even though I'm doing a manual patch, there are ways to automatically apply patches. And in fact, Suckless has some pretty good tips. So right now you can you can see how to generate diffs and how to apply diffs. And, and actually, I've actually heard people who make different Git branches apply different patches to those different Git branches and then merge all of those branches together. You could do that, but what happens a lot of times, which I have actually done this myself, uh, of like I just said, of applying, of making different branches and applying different patches to the different branches, what will happen, more than likely, is that there will be conflicts between different patches. So what do you do? A lot of times you just have to know what you're doing. You just have to know what you're actually adding and what you're actually calling. So this this is why we're going through a manual patch. All right. So I just if you forgot, I basically just got this piece and I put it up here and took out all the pluses. All right. Excellent. Okay. So this is just the end of that context here. If you can see, clean up is right afterwards. There we go. And now we're off to our next difference which is at approximately line 598. I say approximately because like I said, if you start applying different patches, it's not gonna be at exactly 598. In fact, it's not gonna be at 598 at all anymore because we just applied our patch. Nevertheless, we are going to go to that location in the dmenu.c file. So let's look for this. Oh, perfect, we found it. So we're adding this line right above prompt sorry we're at writing this line right above if def x interama i'm not sure what that does but in fact you don't actually need to know Oop, that's bad i don't i don't know what happened okay anyways hopefully everything's fine so like i said we're gonna take out that plus so we added that perfect so the next piece that we're going to change looks like is around 624, line 624. So 624, GG. 
so where is this? We're taking out we're taking out M W X and Y. Okay, so here we go. Again, I should point out that the, these patch maintainers don't always keep up with the latest git release of the corresponding programs but these things are more or less the same so if they're not so this is another way where if you try to automatically patch these things they might not work because it's hard to describe the way they, these people update it's not always in sync so anyways we're just gonna Looks like take these out and put this in. I mean, really, what's happening? I should point out. If you can already see, you we're not exactly taking stuff out and putting stuff in. We're just replacing. But nevertheless, I'm first going to put this in. All right, and then delete that. Okay, so that's that. And then it looks like at 634, which is not that far ahead from this edit, we do something similar. Okay, yeah, here we go. So let's just see real quick. Again, I'm just doing this live, so I'm actually doing a live comparison. X equals zero, X equals zero, Y equals top bar, yada, yada, yada. Uh, no, I was going to explain what this means, but, well, you can look up what that means online. Anyways, I'm going to add this line, add these lines here. Take these out, and then get rid of the plus signs, just like before. Okay, and then we take out prompt W, like it says here. Okay, and that's the end of the file. That's the patch, that's the center patch. So we're gonna quit out of the diff file. We're gonna quit out of D menu. And we're gonna make a final edit. So I the only reason I know about this edit that we should make is not because I've done this before. Well I oh I literally have done this before. But I just remember that the font is gonna be as big as it is here, but just in the center. So we're going to want that a little bigger because, again, what was the point of the last video? The point of the last video was how to make D menu look like Rofi. So we're going to do that again here and try to make it look as aesthetic as possible. So here we go, config. So if you didn't know, uh, I'm just going to make a quick explanation here. We're going to edit the config.h file. Now a lot of patches are going to say edit the .def.h but they're assuming that you are patching a clean project and in fact even when you do make clean it's not going to completely clean it um, it's hard to describe so basically the config.h file that's the only file that the compilation will look at and if make sees that there's not a comp config.h file it's going to copy config.def.h which def is default obviously and it's going to get the config.def.h file and copy it as config.h and then when it compiles it's just going to use config.h so my, my po only point is config.def.h doesn't actually do anything so if you see with one of these patches that it says to edit config.def.h you know you compile it and it's not producing the changes you want that's why so anyways we're going to edit config.h and really quick we are going to change the font size to double what it's supposed to be. Okay, anyways, we're going to run make, just make right now. So, and we're going to run D menu, run. Hmm. Oh, I think I know why. I know exactly why. Okay. sudo make install. And now we can run dmenu run. So this is it's just a little scripting. I mean, 
for those of you who know what's going on, you know why. It's actually not a big deal to why that happened. But anyways, we're going to run D menu run again. So, it's exactly like last time. Well, not exactly. Because it looks like they've made a couple changes to this, but it's not a big deal. So right here, we have our center patch. In fact, we run L... Let's say it's seven lines. I think I, that's what I had it last time. We have our seven lines. We could actually make the font bigger, but that's not a big deal. So let's actually run that to do script. So this is what I'm talking about. If you have nothing in the to do list, it's just going to have the prompt, and that's it. And it's not going to actually show you any, it's not going to have anywhere for you to write, as you can see. So if you remember, remember it was at the top here, and sorry, I I was pointing with my finger. You can't see that, but remember, the the D menu script was running here, and you could type almost indef almost indefinitely, at least as long as the screen is. But now with the center patch, you can't see anything. So I could keep typing here, and I press enter, and there's that thing I just added. I can delete it, but then here we go. Here's the same problem. I just added something, and then I'm gonna add something else. And then there you go. It has the ellipses. If you didn't know, these are called ellipses. I guess I'm pretty sure. I always do this where I have to check now. <laughs> oh, ellipses. Yeah, yeah. Make fun of my spelling ellipsis yeah there we go anyway so there we go <laughs> D menu run works well it looks like Rofi and we could actually give this a prompt it's a P option say run there we go it, it's like almost exactly like I had before you could go in and change the colors either with uh, command line arguments or at compilation for some of the theme stuff, I like to put in my own color scheme and just compile it like that. It's not that big of a deal. But in any case, this this works fine, honestly. So if I run surf, you know, rudyghill.com, my website will come up like that. It works fine. But like I said, there's certain scripts that if you really want length, or I guess here's another case where the center patch might be a little weird. Um, let's say we had something, something very long. All right. So let's say we have a prompt that's very long. I just ran. I just used D menu run so that we didn't have to run another script. But anyways, uh, you can see that it starts to get look kind of weird and asymmetric. You know, let's put some more stuff. As you can see, it starts getting weirder and weirder. Um, and I'm nearing the end of this video, but someone asks, is how how can you set D menu to you know basically make it so it's not in the center? So there was actually this patch for D menu. Let's go again to tools, D menu patches. There was this patch that came before center that was called X Y Z or X Y W looks like that basically allowed you to put offsets. So one of my subscribers asked me that, and well, there you go. That's how you would do that. And um, that's basically the video. That's that's how you patch things manually. And the more patches you add, the more you have to be aware of the context of the files. You're, the more you have to be aware of the context of the files you're editing. There we go. Um, yeah, that's the video. Stay tuned for more. I know I've been posting in a while, like I said, but I've just been busy, really. Um, I know school's out, but nevertheless, I've just been busy, and uh, I got some good stuff for you guys, so just stay tuned. All right, anyways, peace out, doomers. Oh, see, there we go. Okay, so this is kind of awkward. This is supposed to be the end of the video, but um, I cannot really see the options of the script. <laughs>